And I decided to throw in a little blurb on electrolytes in this talk about stoichiometry and chemical equations. What we need to understand is that there are some compounds such as these right here, like sodium fluoride, lithium chloride, potassium iodide, hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, sodium hydroxide, sulfuric acid, and barium hydroxide. These elements, when they, these are, or these compounds, when those are placed in water, they completely disassociate or dissociate from each other. And in other words, they completely ionize when placed in water. Other compounds, they only partially ionize. And we have some examples here, like acetic acid, hydrofluoric acid, nitrous acid. We have ammonia and water, when, of course, you don't place water in water. But water in itself is what we would call a weak electrolyte, because when you place those in water, and water itself, by itself, do not produce very many ions. It's kind of a, a bidirectional reaction, where some are are uh, turned into ions, but not all, not all of them, and so they, we would call them weak electrolytes. And then there's some compounds, some um, items like this, for example, we have urea or methanol, ethanol, glucose, and sucrose, uh, which are basically non-electrolytes or so weak that basically they don't give off any um, ability to carry current. And again, I'll go to the definition of why we call them electrolytes. So let's say we have a beaker of water, and we put those two metal bars in there, and those metal bars are called electrodes. And then we attach those metal bars to a battery. Notice this is the positive end of the battery. This is the negative end of the battery. And just to see if these things that we will put in there are electrolytes, we also connect a little light bulb in there to see the light bulb will go on. And of course, in order to have the light bulb go on, we have to have a complete circuit, which means that the electrons need to be carried through the fluid. And what carries those electrons to the fluid is ions. So if you put, for example, sodium chloride, and do I have that in here? Oh, I don't even have it on the list, but it's also a strong, strong electrolyte because when we put sodium chloride in water, the sodium chloride splits up into sodium ions and chlorine ions, and the sodium ions are, are attracted to the negative uh, electrode, and the chlorine ions are attracted to the positive electrode, so they will travel in the liquid. Sodium ions will travel this way, chlorine ions will travel this way, the chlorine atom will deposit an electron on here, and so therefore there will be an oxidation reaction when the electron jumps off the chlorine and goes onto the electrode. And then on this side, the sodium atom will receive an electron from this particular electrode, and therefore we have a reduction reaction there. And that's how current gets carried through the fluid by depositing and absorbing these electrons, allowing current to flow, and I guess, yeah, current will flow in this direction. And then we can see if the light bulb goes on strongly, then there's a strong current. That means there's a lot of ions in the fluid, and therefore that must have come from a strong electrolyte. If the light bulb is just dimly lit, then whatever we put in there doesn't completely dissociate in the liquid, and we don't have as many ions, and therefore we just have a little bit of current through there. And then if you were to, for example, throw sucrose in there, you would not see the light bulb go at all. Or if you have pure water in there, you would not see the light bulb at all because those are basically non-electrolytes. Water is a very weak one, and you can basically not even see a current in this kind of situation. Now, what do we call these electrodes? Well, it turns out that the electrode that is negatively charged, which attracts cations, is called the cathode. So the cathode is the electrode that's negatively charged, which attracts positive ions. And the other anode, which is positively charged, which attracts negative anions, is called the anode. So the anode is negatively charged, I mean positively charged, which attracts negative ions. The cathode is negatively charged, attracts positive ions. And so the positive ions are called cations, the negative ions are called anions, and the electrodes are then as associated with those names, so therefore this is called the anode, and this is called the cathode. Kind of confusing, but if you see the diagram, you keep track of that, then it's not too bad. So, just to show you what these reactions would look like, if you put hydrochloric acid, uh, aqueous hydrochloric acid, in a water solution, the hydrogen will separate from the chlorine, you now have ions, and this reaction will happen completely, meaning all of the hydro hydrochloric acid uh, molecules will completely disassociate into hydrogen and chlorine, and therefore this makes it for a strong electrolyte. But if we put acetic acid in water, what happens is this hydrogen will separate from the rest of the molecule, forming acetic ion, 
and the hydrogen ion, but it doesn't do that completely. Not all of the molecules will do that, and therefore we have what we call a bidirectional reaction, which means some of them will react and become this, and some of those will join together again and turn into acetic acid molecules. And that reaction will go back and forth so that you not, never have all of them react so that they'll turn into ions, and therefore those form weak electrolytes. And so, just a little blurb, just a little information so that you understand a little bit better what electrolytes are.